First of all, can I call you Sally? Oh, yes. Can that would be Sally? lovely if you call me yeah. Sally. Well, I know that's your middle name, right? That's right. And you like that. You made an interesting comment in an article I read that your grandmother had a, a certain pride connected with her poverty. And I, I get the feeling that a, as you become further and further removed, obviously, from better times, that maybe this pride fades somewhat or it tarnishes. Uh, we see that exhibited in your character, Mrs. Johnston. We see this pride. Things are polished and clean as best you can with the little you have. But I wonder, in, in likening it today, how difficult it is to maintain this kind of pride generation after generation of, of going through disadvantaged times. Yeah, well, I think in those times, I mean, there was, there was, there was no television. Um, my grand, grandmother didn't have a a radio, you know, that she was a very religious lady and the radio was sort of <laughs> an evil thing to have around, although they were all very musical and they sang in chapel, sang everywhere. I th just think it was a kind of, a, a sort of an ignorance in a way. Mm. I don't think they even realized they were poor, that's just the way it was. Now, of course, poverty is, is an issue. It, it wasn't an issue that's then. That's true, that's know? very true. And uh, there are so many other contemporary themes here, this whole business of, of orphanages and welfare children, the idea that yeah. you can no longer get a job and hold it till you get the gold watch, but you could yeah. conceivably be out on the street at any time. And there are a lot of things to explore here. And, and, and you, you wonder when you see these two twins separated, how much, how much of the way they behave is learned behavior and how much of it is innate? And that's a question that's called into play. That I, I know. You know, you, you, you look at these two kids and you wonder, if we could just give our children a little more, you know, then, it, then, then perhaps we, we wouldn't have some of the problems we have. Well, the, the line, that the, the very last thing that Mickey says, uh, that, that's the, the boy who might keep, uh, he's, he looks at me and, and he says, Mom, why, why, why didn't you give me away? And Oh, it's crushing, it's, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a line actually which, uh, for a while, David cut on Broadway because some people thought it was funny. You know, there are always a few fools out there who <laughs> don't get it, you know. But it's true, uh, and uh, it's a terrible moment for me. I'm yes, standing here with these two boys in front of me, one who has grown up with me in, in poverty, uh, and, and love, of course, but all, all the problems of poverty, and, and the other boy who has grown up in relative you know, wealth, I suppose, but hasn't had the love of, of his real mother. These two boys are standing in front of me, and this, this boy says, why didn't you give me away? I mean, it's just, you know, and there it is. There is the dilemma. He, he obviously feels that he's missed out on a lot. And of course he has, but, you know, I don't know what, that, what the answer is to that, you know. As if there's not enough guilt that you're saddled with. Here you are at the very end of the play, uh -huh. and it, it just, the guilt seems to perpetuate itself. Absolutely. Uh, to make matters even worse, you have the character of the narrator who, even in your lighter moments, continues to remind you of your failings and of your faults and of your overriding guilt and of the little lies that blossom somehow into tenfold <laughs> productions. I mean, it's, it's, it, Tough nut. It, it is a tough nut. It's, mm -hmm. it's not your old knees up musical, is no, it? No, <laughs> no. But I would think that when you are, and you're confronted really by this narrator of conscience, uh, along with Mrs. Lyons, a considerable amount of the time, that you probably, as an actress, you have to kind of uh, react to that and, and you know, absorb what he's saying and then have that reflected somehow in your character. Wow. It, it, it's quite, a, quite a, yeah. a juggling act, actually. And it, it sort of looks easy from, uh, from the outside. But when you actually get to do it, it's, it's, it's quite tricky, although it's very well written.
the songs are very lyric. Yeah. Very I, telling. Yeah. I, what I like about the songs is that, I, um, well, I think everyone who's played the role has, has made it, uh, made it their own, of course, obviously. But I, I find that this music is very supple, and I'm able to play around with it and make it my own, and that's why I enjoy singing it. And in fact, Mrs. Johnston has more music than words. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that, but she doesn't have fabulous scenes, whereas Mickey, David's, David's role, does. He has wonderful scenes. Mrs. Johnston doesn't have really sort of get down, you know, get on with it type scenes. So the scenes are really, she expresses herself through her songs. You do just such a beautiful job with this. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know what this is, but you have a wonderful maternal instinct on stage. I really believe that you are the mother of these two boys. <coughs> well, you know, I, I am a mother. And I have to say, when I first rehearsed that, that last scene in the rehearsal room, uh, I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. And, and I actually stopped and I said, OK, well, I knew I wasn't supposed to do this play. I said, now you have to recast it because I cannot play this scene. I can't sing and, and have my heart broken at the same time. It's impossible to do. You can't mm -hmm. sing and laugh at the same time. You mm -hmm. can't sing and cry at the same time. And I mean, I really felt like that. I just started walking out the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the director said, whoa, whoa, whoa. He said, he said, you'll get over that. He said, OK, sob as much as you like for the next 10 days, if you like. He said, but then you will, you will be able to do it. And I can, you know. It's just knowing how far you can go with it. You just have to let it take you over to a certain degree, you know, but not too much. And, you know, you're supposed to be an actress. You're supposed to be able to control these things. But, it, you know, when something really touches you inside, you know, I have a boy uh, who's 22 now, and, and I can see him there. He's there. Speaking of your, your family and, and your, your son, you've always been um, well-based. Uh, you've had the good roots. Uh, you've had that support group throughout the 60s when you were a big star, and, and, and it must have been difficult to maintain your head and your, your own personality amidst all this adulation and celebration. But you've always had these, these down-to-earth roots. I don't know. At, you know I, I started when I was six. You know, so That's true. Uh, and there's a great story there. You know, and, and by the time I was eight or nine, I was a child star in England. I mean, this is all very boring for you, but I mean, no, they uh, th love th that's a. You know, that, th these are facts. And so I don't remember when I started being well-known or a star, whatever you like to call it. It's just a way of life for me. I don't even notice it anymore. It, does, mm. it doesn't bug me, uh, mm. and it's, it's just the way it is. I think it's a great story, though, about how your father took you to the BBC to audition <laughs> and tell us the rest, because it's, it's such an interesting story. No, it, was, it wasn't an audition. It was. Um, uh, in London, you know, during the war, um, they used to have these shows for uh, children whose parents or whose fathers, uncles, brothers were serving in the forces you know, overseas. And uh, the BBC, Auntie Beeb, as we call her, um, <laughs> used to have these uh, programs where children can go along and send messages to, to, to their relatives. And uh, I had an uncle who, who was serving in Iraq. And right in the middle of rehearsal, there was the most gigantic air raid. I mean, really, the place was shaking. And most of the kids were from out of town and were a bit scared. Of course, I was a Londoner, you know. <laughs> and uh, so the producer said, hey, you know, would one of the children like to come up and say a poem or <laughs> sing a song or anything to try and you know, relax the atmosphere? Nobody else volunteered, so I got up, you know, because I'd been singing in school and chapel. And I sang, they stood me on a box in front of the microphone, and I sang. And they heard, heard it in the control room. The orchestra joined in, just yeah. like in the movies. And th they said, hey, that's, that's a wonderful voice. Would you like to sing as well as uh, send your message? And that's how I first sang on the radio. And there was an enormous reaction from the soldiers. And from there, you got your own radio show, and you were um, a counterpart of Julie Andrews, Anthony Newley, who had their own shows and were child stars. Yeah, we were all chums together, yes. Yeah. And the first time I faced an American audience was, was on the Ed Sullivan show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and downtown was number one, and they'd been screaming me f for me to come over, and I couldn't because I was working in France, you know, because I was 
I was like the number one singer in France, you know, while Piaf was still alive. And uh, so I had all this career going on. Then, then downtown hit, and Ed Sullivan, you know, called and 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 I remember my husband saying, "Qui est Ed Sullivan? You know, who 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 is Ed Sullivan? Who is this man who keeps calling? You know?" And I said, "Well, you know." I, I think it's kind of, kind of important, but we couldn't get there. We couldn't get. Eventually, I got there, and I arrived jet lagged straight from the airport uh -huh. into this theatre, and uh, I walked on the stage in front of this audience. You know, I walked on, and they all stood up. I don't know what happened, <laughs> you know, and it was that. That was my first contact with an American audience. So you know, I mean, that was amazing. It wasn't reticence then, obviously, that contributed to your perhaps not wanting to do this Broadway piece, but, but maybe you felt like you'd already gambled enough in your life, and what's the point of taking a risk, perhaps? Or um, Well, that's what other people were saying to me. Mm -hmm. They were saying, oh, you don't want to do that. You know, it's, it, it, it had already opened. The reviews had not been very good. The business wasn't all that great. And they said, why do that, you know? Good for you. And that was, at that that, yeah. what, that was part of what made me do it the in challenge. the end. I thought, no, I will try this. This is exciting. I've always gone for things that are a bit difficult. And I've made mistakes. Of course I have. You know, I've done, done a lot of silly things. But, uh, you know, hey, you know, that's part of the, that's the fun of it. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise, you know, of course, you were saying when I do concerts, I, obviously I, I, I do all the old hits. And they're very good songs, actually. They, you know, they they, you know, Subway's a marvelous we song. We hear them all the time here. Yeah, but they're great still. songs. So mm -hmm. I don't feel embarrassed about singing them still. But I don't just stick with that. That, I mean, I think they'd lynch me if I didn't sing them. But in with all that other stuff, I do. Uh, you know, I do some Eric Satie. I do some. Uh, um, I do some Freddie Mercury. I do a whole load of songs. I do things that I like, and uh, I like to think that when people leave my concerts, they don't go out singing downtown, they go out thinking, hey, that was, that was you know, I like the way she did that song, you know, I hadn't heard that one like that before. You know. Thank you for joining us on National Arts. It certainly is reassuring to see the many diverse talents of our singing stars from the 1960s and 70s. We wish them all the best in their current endeavors. Until next time, remember, art was meant to be appreciated, so you be a part of it.